How's it going everybody? Afro DJ Mac here and I want to do a little tutorial on building your own instrument racks. I recently had the chance to speak to the Sydney Australia Ableton Live user group and one of the questions they had was how do I make my racks and normally I just kind of give them to you and show you how they work but today I thought I'd take you into the making process. So first thing I did that I think is a really cool idea is I put my Dropbox folder inside my places on live. That means I have access to all the things I put in Dropbox. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll save a recording I make on my phone and put it in Dropbox. And I've got this folder called Dropbox Ideas just for that. And I, it was a Christmas Eve and I recorded a wine glass during the family dinner. And I'll just hit the headphone icon so we can hear us. Yeah, he wants to hold the microphone. You can hear the wine glass in just a second. And you can hear the family kind of carrying on in the background. Now, I'm not too worried about the family because I think the kind of character of all that noise will be interesting in my sample. So I'll just turn this off. I'm going to go and hit Command F to enter the search up here. I'm going to write in simpler to get my simpler down arrow twice and hit enter. There we have it. And I'll go back into Dropbox. We'll just X out of here and grab my wine glass sample and drop it on my simpler. I'm going to just open this up nice and big so we can see everything. So, as I play my push, I'm pushing the sample around. So we need to find a good spot of the sample. I'm going to say take this one right here. I'm going to zoom in so I can see that we've got no silence or sound before the sound of the wine glass. And there it is. So when I hold it down, you'll hear the carrying on of the family. As I pitch it out, it starts making all these kind of crazy noises. I'm going to turn off loop because I don't want it to give us all that rhythmic stuff. And I'm just going to go into my simpler and drag my endpoint right before the next hit so that I do retain all of those funny family noises in here. And now. Cool. That's what we get. And. Let's see. I need to tune this now. I need to make sure the pitch is proper. So I'm going to hit Command F and type in tuner to get my tuner out of my browser. And when I play the note, we can see I'm registering about an E a little bit higher. So I'm going to go to the transpose control and just bring this down so I'm getting a C. And since I'm a few cents above, namely about 37 or so, I'm going to just type in negative 37 on my detune. And that pretty much gives us a C. A little wobbly around there, but it's close enough. Sounds great. Now we know we're in tune, so I can get rid of tuner. Delete that. Something I thought would be really cool with this particular instrument would be to reverse the sample. So let me just right click here to group this into an instrument rack. Show my macros, which we'll get to in a few minutes. And I'm going to duplicate this chain. I'll show you why in a second. I'll mute this first one here. I'm going to name this one Reverse. And if you right click on the Simpler, you can reverse the sample. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. If we zoom in, you can see my sample. And when I hit the key, this is what we get. Let's turn off snap. Maybe not turn off snap. There we go, just like that. Fine, I'm okay with that sound. I'm going to zoom this, or move the end point, I should say, or well, the start point in this case. Now I've got my little wine glass sound. In fact, what I'm going to do, since I kind of like this area of the sample, I'm going to turn loop back on. I'm going to turn off the warp mode so I can get a nice fade on my loop. Change the length a little bit. And now I've got this really nice noisy sound of a wine glass. I could, if I want, bring in some of those family sounds or just tighten in on the wine glass. I think I'm going to tighten in on the wine glass. Maybe just move it out a little bit. A lot of this I'm just kind of figuring out as I go. I'm trying to decide what I think sounds best. Now I'm going to go into the chain selector here and I'm going to pull out the first wine glass all the way to 
26. And I'm going to move this one over 1 to start at 1 and move this all the way to 127. And then I can grab the tops of these chain selectors and have a little fade go on. And I'll take my chain selector here and I'm going to map it to macro 1. And now when I turn macro 1, I'm moving between my two samples, my two instruments. So first let's unmute the first chain. Okay, we'll go back to our instrument rack. And the closer I get to 127, the more I just get that looped sound. I can get a little bit of an attack if I like. So what this is going to do is allow me to move from like just this sort of like quick hit to something a little more sustained. And what I might just do here on my first wine glass sample is give myself a little bit more of a release. Kind of like that. And in fact, what I'll do, I'm going to map the attack to macro 2 and the release to macro 3. I'm going to go to my other chain and do exactly the same thing. Attack and release. So that now, in my chain, in my instrument rack, attack and release will affect both chains. And what I think is so cool about this sound is like just the noise going on in it. There's a lot of interesting stuff happening in here. So let me just name this instrument rack Wine Glass. Hit enter. And I will say this is um, going to be between forward and reverse. We'll just write reverse so it fits. We've got our attack and decay. And I'm going to close that down. And I'm going to group this into another instrument rack. I'm going to map these macros accordingly to my first three macros here. We'll just kind of bring those back to where we want them. And now what I'm going to do is just start adding some effects. So I'm going to grab Auto Filter because I think a filter would sound very nice on here. You can kind of play around with the way that sounds a lot using the filter. So I'm going to map the frequency to macro 4, the resonance to 5, and I'm even going to map the filter type to 6. And I'm going to put this on, say, the MS2. And now, let's give this a listen here. Let's turn up our frequency. All right, sounds kind of nice. And we can even change to a different sort of sound. It's a different filter. We have some interesting controls. And even, honestly, kind of like you can do some like interesting like glitchy things like this. Now I'm noticing as I'm holding down those notes, I kind of wish they would have stayed and sustained and looped. So I'm going to go back into my reverse, make sure that's looping. Well, you know what? I'm not going to play with that. I'm going to let this first one just play out and I'm going to let the reverse happen if I move the sustain happen on the reverse so part of the sample. So now as I hold it, I get it. Okay, so if I want that, I need to just move beyond zero on my chain selector, my forward reverse, and I'll get that nice sustain. You get some like interesting things happen with those voices. I think for this one it might be kind of nice to cut out the lows. So I think that's where a lot of the noise is happening. But the wine glass is a bit in the higher frequencies. Of course if I want some low bass notes I'm going to have to bring back in my lows. Very nice. Next thing I think would sound good here is a delay. I'm always a fan of ping pong delay. I'm going to put that after my auto filter. Auto filter. 
because I don't want to filter out the delay. If I put it here, I will be filtering out the delay when I turn up my filter. I'd prefer to have the delay play. So this way I can adjust this should I feel like it. And we also get those nice sweeps afterwards as well in the delay. That's probably the best part of it. I can delay those, those sounds and get those interesting kind of swooshes. Let me just go in here and rename. I'm going to hit Command R and rename this low pass filter. Hit enter. And I just like to keep this cleaner filter res. And the filter type will be good. And I'll map my dry wet of my delay to macro 7. And I'm going to turn off sync and put on just regular time and map that to 8. And what I'll also do, I'll turn sync on and just map the timing of the sync as well. But I'm going to keep it on time. So I'm going to rename this to dry uh, delay dry wet and this will be delay time time and we can color these so we can kind of tell what's going on I'll pick a nice little blue here and we'll put uh, we'll say the velocity and attack will kind of give the same color so they kind of it's easy to see that they go together our filter I'm going to do the same thing so I'll put the same color on here and I don't know we'll do this purple say and all of my filtering knobs will have that purple color and the final delay we will pick let's try this green so again we can kind of see how things work together and now what I can do is minimize all of these parts of my chain and I got my nice clean rack right here with some nice macro controls kind of experiment with like which part of the simpler we want to hear the more percussive than zero or maybe a little bit more of the softer chord in this case maybe I'll turn my attack up a little bit Just like that. And we'll rename this. I'll call this the Afro DJ Mac Wine Glass. And there we have it. We've got our instrument, and I think it sounds pretty cool. And with that, I'm going to end this and put this up online for you to download for free. I hope that was helpful to you guys. I think it's a really nice sounding instrument now that's all finished. Bit of character, bit of soul, you know, not just kind of a dry virtual synth, but something with a little life going on. Thanks a lot. Enjoy.